but we did get this um, wall done right here. I got this done yesterday, a couple days ago. And you can see it's already starting to dry some here, which is pretty cool. So, and it's very solid. So this is only one coat. Okay, just like this was one coat. And I put this up, man, uh, a month ago, just as a trial. And you can see how strong it is. This is, it's it's not very thick. It may be a half an inch thick at the most, but it is solid. Um, I did this part first because I wasn't sure how it was gonna go. Um, I've never done this kind of thing before. So this was just practice. This is actually gonna be planter right here. So the planter dirt level is gonna come up to here. Obviously the planter is gonna come out to here. I'm gonna have a wall along here and that's gonna taper over. This is all gonna be planter. So this is gonna be covered up. Um, I thought I was gonna pour like a concrete uh, wall right here, like put a board up here and then pour concrete behind it, have it fill in all the variations and um, indentations in the tire bells, but, and the gaps in the tire bells, but that was gonna take a lot of concrete. And I thought, well, I'll just practice my wall that I'm gonna put as the wall over here that's gonna be visible. This won't be visible. I'll just practice here, see how it goes. And um, it's actually gone pretty fast and pretty well. I'm kind of surprised. Um, a couple things I've learned about doing this is the wire mesh. Um, if it's not tied down pretty tight, if it's like, if it's flexible and gives a lot, like uh, right here, that's a nightmare to spread um, this cement plaster on. Now this is so irregular. I can't use a trowel at all. There's no, there's no using a trowel on this unless, I mean, I'm no expert by any means. I'm far from an expert. So I'm just spreading it by hand. I'm just taking a glob on my hand and spreading it up and then taking another glob and spreading up and then kind of tying it into the piece that's already there and then spreading another piece and tying it into that piece and spreading another piece. So, um, and then I'm trying to keep it about a quarter inch to a half inch thick. So this will get one, uh, this is the scratch coat, obviously, because you can see all the scratches on it, and this will get one more coat on it. So this should be a pretty strong back wall for my um, planter. Of course, we'll have a layer of gravel, we'll have a layer of sand, and then we'll have 18 inches of topsoil on top of that. So that'll be 36 inches total, which will be three feet, which comes up to about right here. Okay, so that's this is going to be my back wall, and it should be plenty, plenty strong. Of course, it's going to get EPDM rubber around it like this and along the whole length to uh, to keep it from to keep the water contained. As far as the scratch coat goes, I think this was 15 bucks on Amazon. I I guess that's the brand. Anyway, it's very cool because it's very flexible. And so as you drag it along, um, it just follows the contours of the tire bales. Of course, on a flat wall, it does an even better job, but it gives you a nice scratch coat that you can, uh, that'll allow your next coat, your finish coat to adhere it gives it something to adhere to, right? So that I think was worth the investment because I can just drag it over. It doesn't, I thought I'll just use a wire brush or something like that. And it's, that's a hundred times better than trying to use a wire brush, especially trying to follow these contours. So, so it's getting nice and solid here. It's starting to dry. Um, this morning I finished up right here, this little section from, I think here over and then I started on this vertical part right here. Now this is all wood behind here. This is a flat surface. You can see the metal lath I was able to screw. It's pretty flat. This went super fast. It's just so easy to spread it on because the wire's not flexing and giving. Now, um, back to what I was saying about the wire that's flexing. Um, if it does flex like this and you're trying to spread it on, let's say you've spread a layer on right here and you push right here, that flexes and this just falls out then. So you have to be super careful and kind of real uh, gentle as you're spreading the concrete on. You want to push it in hard enough that it penetrates here. You don't want to push too hard that it actually falls behind. Um, and you push it all through and it all falls behind. So you're wasting it. Um, you want to just kind of, and you'd kind of develop a feel for what you, um, how much pressure you're, you're putting on, depending on how thick your mix is and all that. So, but this rigider, a uh, rigider, this more firm areas like here, these are real easy to spread on. Even if they're overhanging a little bit, like this is overhanging right here, that's super rigid. That's not gonna, that's gonna be easy to spread up that. Just we'll spread that and it'll stick like a, it'll stick really well. So you can see I've scratched this already. Um, I need to go out and make another mix. 
I'm gonna go ahead and do this wall right here and go ahead and finish it all the way up to the top. And then I'll work on this section right here. And that's probably all uh, as far as I'll get today is my guess because I've only got three or four more hours. And then um, we'll just continue on going down the wall. Uh, of course, this is a scratch coat. I have another coat to put on. So it is a lot of work. It takes, uh, I don't know, it's, it goes faster than I thought it would, but it still takes time, okay? It's not hard work at all, though. I was kind of surprised how easy it was. Sometimes this, the crazy thing about this project is the things that I think are easy don't turn out to be easy. They turn out to be the hard parts. And then the things that I think, I don't know, understand that's not how it's going to go, that seems like it's going to be really hard, turns out to be the easy part. So in spreading this concrete on, this is pretty easy. Um, you can see I got a hole right here where it fell through on the back side. And sometimes a chunk will fall out the front side, like right here, a chunk fell out right here. And I'll just go back and patch that. I'll spray it with a spray bottle to wet the concrete, let it sit for a few minutes, and then I'll patch it. Okay, good. I like that it's not flat, okay? So I could have built a frame around this and made it nice and flat. It would have taken extra work and extra... I still would have had to use the metal lath. I like the look of the contours of the tire bales. It's not all the all the variability of the tire bells, but it's some there. And it kind of reminds me that, yeah, this is a recycled, it's not a recycled building totally, but a lot of these are repurposed to recycled uh, materials um, in this build. So it's, I like it. I, I mean, if I go in a regular house, that's a stick built house and it, I expect the walls to be square. I expect them to be true. I expect them to, everything to look level and flat and all that. But in a building like this, it's like an earthship. There's going to be variation. There's going to be contours that kind of give it character. So this will go on a lot easier than it does on the tire bales because I have a wall almost immediately behind the lath. And it's fairly flat. So here I want to just try to make, I'm not looking for a smooth look, but um, I want to try to have kind of roughly the same thickness on there. And this doesn't have to be thick at all right here. Right. Like this wall will. Like that wall will. So we've got a little bit of water inside. <clears throat> Had some sand delivered this morning, so I'm pretty excited. Have a big sand pile. So this is three part sand to one part Portland cement. Two of those. It is nice to have a little bit of a breeze so you don't have to breathe this stuff. Okay, pretty soupy. This should thicken it up a bit. Let's throw a little bit in at a time. So I just try to stand on the side the wind's blowing from so that it blows all the dust the other direction. We're gonna get another bucket of sand.
So I don't have my water amount that I put in there exact yet, but it's fairly close. There's a, a rim, this rim right here, it shows up inside there. I fill the water up to that rim right there. And then that's a good starting point. So it's fairly moist. It doesn't pour off my hand like ooze off it. It seems to be pretty sticky. You can form it into a ball pretty easily. And even when it's hanging there, it's not breaking off. Hopefully that's coming out in the camera. It's not just breaking off. So I think this is a good mix. This is obviously not concrete uh, pouring mix that you'd want to pour into a form. It's too thick for that, but you want it thicker because uh, it's what we're doing. So cool. <clears throat> so now, smash this right up against the wall, didn't I? So I'm trying to just keep a board here. If the cement does fall from above, it lands on this board and doesn't land in the dirt. And not that dirt hurts it, but um, then it, uh, what am I trying to say? It's easy to pick up. It's easy to salvage. So I'm just taking a small amount in my hand, just kind of pressing it into the lath and then just kind of smoothing it off to the side. You can see how that flex so much right there and it almost broke off. So we'll just kind of be more careful right here and just kind of smooth and go slow so we don't flex it too much and break it off. see how that mix um, does spread pretty well so right here uh, where it's against a tire I can press pretty hard or where the as long as there's not an air gap behind it you can press pretty hard and really drive it in but if there's an air gap like there is all along right here you just want to press just enough to kind of push it through and um, hope my camera angles right See how much it flexed there? Ooh, that flexed a lot. I didn't tie that in well at all. Let's see if we can just put a little bit right there. So where it's flexy, what I found is just take a small amount and just do real small sections and just barely press it in there and then smooth it. And that's still gonna fall out, isn't it? Oh, well, I tried. And what I found is sometimes five minutes later, a piece will just fall out, clunk, because it just got flexed too much around it. There's too much flexion around it. So I'm still trying, again, I'm still trying to push it up as I press it in and then I'm just trying to run my hand to the right just to kind of help connect the um, two different pieces, I guess. I don't know how else to say that. Super flexible there. You can see the whole thing kind of shudder when I push on it. This is a little bit overhanging here. You're going to have to be kind of careful. Use enough firm pressure to drive it in, but try not to push it all the way through. Same thing here. And try to, on these overhanging ones, I try to keep it a little bit thinner just because there's not so much weight of uh, plaster trying to pull it out then. 
Look at that piece is real flexible right there. Okay, but then we get up here onto this tire where it's pretty solid and I can push pretty hard. Anywhere there's double, like I've overlapped the lath, you can also push pretty hard. I can also push pretty hard because that extra lath behind helps kind of catch the helps kind of catch the cement. And I know there's some plasterer out there or somebody with more experience than I <laughs> is laughing at me or um, going, wow, you're an idiot. Why are you doing it that way? You never do it that way. And, um, and that's okay. I'd love to have uh, comments, feedback down below. You guys that are experienced want to talk about this, want to share your experience, please do. So again, that wall over there that I first trialed, um, that very gray one that I made like a month ago, not very thick, um, same mix, uh, lots of flexibility in the wire behind it because I didn't know anything about, I didn't, wasn't really grasping that yet. And it's still solid as a rock. So I'm pretty confident that once I get even one layer on, the flexibility is all gonna go away, obviously. And then of course the second layer is just gonna make it that much, that much stronger, so. Look at that flex, I don't wanna push on it too much. Okay, you can see some flexibility back behind there. You can see the wire flexing a little bit. So, so that's where you just try to be careful, um, try to, and you'll develop a feel for whether you're pushing too hard or too soft. You want to push hard enough that the concrete goes through the um, openings there, but not so hard that you push it all the way through and then it falls out the back. And this little board is nice here just to catch anything that falls in the little crumbs or little pieces, crumbs, crumbs of concrete, pieces of concrete that fall off because that happens um, constantly. And so again, we'll just take a blob, push it up, kind of smear it in and then kind of tie it in to the side like that. Um, just kind of smooth it over to help tie the uh, pieces together. Pieces, blobs, I don't know what they are where it's overhanging right here. This overhang will be um, problematic, especially with air behind it, especially if it's flexible. So on these overhanging areas, I try to make it just a little bit thinner and use a little bit smaller um, blobs and try not to make one big blob and just barely push it in and then let it. So as I'm doing this, think about that big square mesh or even half inch mesh or even quarter inch mesh that doesn't have these little shelves for the concrete to catch on. What's, you know, this wire lath is worth its weight in, uh, I mean, it's very much worth its price, what it costs. So and if you had several people doing this, you're, I mean, you could do a room and you had somebody mixing and somebody's, you know, people spreading and people mixing, you could knock a room out in no time. <laughs> 